With the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording... The Lone Ranger. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question. And here's one of the happy, happy people have to say. Weedies, oh, weedies, and do, 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 and okay. Okay. Hello, this is the Lone Ranger speaking. You know Americans have the reputation of being always on the go. You can see how we got that reputation when you think back on the exploits of men like Daniel Boone, Lewis and Clark, Davy Crockett, and many others. They had to cross the rivers, climb the mountains, break the trails from the Atlantic to the Pacific. Today, Americans are still full of energy. And the important thing to remember is that we are a wheat eating nation. We eat more energy-giving wheat by far than any other grain. It's one big reason why we are still on the move exploring new frontiers. Keep body your weenies and you'll be do 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 and okay. okay. With his faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Away! Clarabelle Hornblow, who owned an extensive cattle ranch, was one of the Lone Ranger's most loyal friends. Thunder Martin, who worked for Clarabelle, was equally loyal. Activities on the ranch made it impossible for either Clarabelle or Thunder Martin to take part in the affairs of the nearest town. Despite this, the town's most important citizens were discussing Thunder Martin at a meeting in the home of Judge Joshua Knight. Now, Judge Knight, let's get this straight. Are you serious in suggesting that we appoint Thunder Martin to take your place as judge? Doctor, I have never in my life been more serious. I don't believe it, Judge Knight. Thunder Martin is the roughest, toughest hombre in this part of the country. Thunder Martin may be a good mule skin. Now, but now one, one moment, Doctor. It isn't generally known that Thunder Martin studied law in the East what? before he came to this part of the country. Oh. Moreover, he is absolutely honest and fair. He cannot be influenced by bribes or threats. Hmm. Well, well, I'm willing to give Thunder a chance on Judge Knight say so. Gentlemen, you have the authority not only to appoint a judge, but to toss one out. Give Martin a chance. If he lets us down, we can always replace him. Well, that sounds fair enough. How do you feel, Doc? Uh, well, I'm for it. And I. Uh, good, right. good. Then it's agreed. <laughs> Toto, the faithful Indian companion of the Lone Ranger, rode all night to deliver the surprising news to the Lone Ranger. It was morning when he reached the camp. Oh, Toto, fella. Easy, Scott. Easy, fella. Kima Sabi, we got plenty big news. Oh, what is it, Toto? Last night, men from town call on Thunder Martin and ask him be judge. Well, how did Thunder take the news? Well, him plenty surprised. For a long time, him not speak. He watched close and see tear in his eye. Oh, uh, what did Clarabelle say? Her plenty surprised, too. And plenty surprised when Thunder say him study law in East. Not many people knew about that. Is uh, Thunder going to take the job? Uh, him take it. Uh, Kimasabe. Yes? 
How many in town know Thunder, lawyer, one time? When I learned that Judge Knight planned to retire, as soon as he could find a satisfactory man to take his place, I uh, wrote a letter. Oh. You write letters to Judge Knight? Yes. I wrote to Judge Knight and suggested that he investigate the early days of Thunder Martin and consider him for the new judge. I'd like to see Thunder back where he ought to be. Here's a little... Oh, go visit Padre now? No, Tonto. View of Thunder's appointment, we'll change our plans. I want to congratulate him. We'll ride to Clarabelle Hornblow's ranch. Uh. That evening found Thunder Martin still in town, accompanied by the retiring Judge Knight and the sheriff. The news of his acceptance of the post had spread through the town like wildfire and reached many of the surrounding ranches. On one of the ranches, Dan Reed sat in the living room with Clarabelle Hornblow. Miss Hornblow, on the way here, I heard something about a man named Blinky Ryan. Mm, that no count horse thief. I thought Ryan was a bad outlaw. Isn't he supposed to be a mail robber and a murderer? Yep, yep, only that's not why he's in jail. Oh? See, he and a couple of his friends came into town a week ago and started a fight in the cafe. The sheriff caught Blinky, but his pals got away. He's in the calaboose for disturbing the peace. Is that all? Yep. At worst, you'll get about 30 days in jail. What a shame. Well, even that's better than nothing. Ryan has always bragged that no jail would ever get him. <laughs> That'll hurt his pride to spend some time in the pokey. And Thunder's just the man to send him there. <laughs> I'd kind of like to be at that trial, Daniel. Hey, let's go. Fine, I'd like to. Thunder knows more law than most people suspected. There's just a chance he'll find some way to put Ryan in jail for a longer stretch. That's why we're here. What was what, 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 Who are you? Let me get my gun. I'll show these crawling sneak hey, thieves. Hey, what are My blade is up. Why, you... It goes for you, too, boy. Keep him covered, Connie. I'll rope him. Right. Connie? You're, you're Connie? That's right. And if you know me, you know I'll shoot. Miss Hornblow, these men... Steady, men's... steady, Daniel. I know these two... They're killers. They're pals of Blinky Ryan. What's your woman, Connie? I'll toss a rope around the boy. Let me go. And what's the idea of coming in here like this? We aim to get Blinky out of jail, that's all. We don't want to hurt anyone unless it's necessary. Now hold your wrist together. Thunder will find out about this when yes, he does. Just because of Thunder Martin, we're doing this. You see, he's to sit on Blinky Ryan's trial tomorrow morning. If he knows your life's in danger... You think twice before he put Blinky in jail. Yeah, that'll hold you. You got the note, Connie? Yeah, right here. It's short and to the point. We didn't say anything in that note about the boy. I'll write something in, and we'll leave it on the table under the lamp where Thunder Martin will see it when he comes home. London Carney saddled Dan Reed's horse and one of Clarabelle's, then forced their prisoners to mount with hands tied in front. Not long after Clarabelle and Dan Reed had been taken away by Blinky Ryan's friend, Thunder Martin returned to the ranch. Oh, 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 oh. He was eager to tell his old friend Clarabelle and Dan Reed about his new position. Clarabelle! Hey, Clarabelle! Clarabelle! Dad Radish, can't you hear me? Ah, uh, doggone it. Now, where's that woman gone? Hey, uh, Dan! Dan Reed, are you here? Yes. Which is your paper? Thunder read the message from Blinky Ryan's pals and let out a bellow of rage. Why, the sneaking coyotes of all the low down on I think they can shove me around by capturing Clarabelle and Dan, huh? Thunder. Huh? What the... What's the matter with you? I could hear you yelling as we came through the gate. You. Oh, great day. I'm glad to see you. And that goes for you too, Tonto. What's wrong, but Thunder? There's a plenty wrong. And it's all here in this note. I've been made judge, and I'm to try a crook named Blinky Ryan first thing in the morning. Well, so I heard. What about it? Well, I came here from town a few minutes ago and found this note propped up beneath a lamp. Blinky's pals have captured Clarabelle and Dan Reed. Dan Reed? Let me see that note. Uh, I've never been madder in my life. Quiet, I've... quiet, Thunder. Give me a chance to read the note. Oh, go on, low down, sir. Wait, well. listen to this, Tonto. There's only one man in town can save Clarabelle Hornblow's life. His name is Blinky Ryan. He rides out of town a free man. Miss Hornblow rides in. If Blinky goes to jail, you can guess what will happen. What goes for Miss Hornblow goes also for the boy named Dan. If I send him to jail, Clarabelle and Dan, 
will be killed by his pal. And I gotta send Ryan to jail. I just got it. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Sheriff Sam is a boy of ten. He busts right in the robber's den and gets his man because he knows he's got gold power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got gold power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 That's Cheerios. The cereal shaped like little letter O's. And those O's stand for oats. The good grain Cheerios is made from. Every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, those good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. You can see that Cheerios is made to give you real go power. So make sure you have a Cheerios breakfast every day. Then you'll hear people say, He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. The Lone Ranger and Toto arrived at Clarabelle Hornblow's ranch house just after Thunder Martin found a note advising that Clarabelle and Dan Reed had been abducted. What am I going to do if I put Ryan in jail? Those crooks will kill both Dan and Clarabelle. Maybe crooks leave tracks outside. Well, I'm going gunning for Hold it, Thunder. I... Leave that to Toto and me. We'll try to locate those crooks. But what if Clarabelle and Dan are still gone when I open court in the morning? What'll I do? I can't turn a crook like Ryan free. The law's waited too long to get him. Do whatever you think best. But remember, Thunder, as a judge in court, you represent the government. Anything that hurts you personally should not influence your decisions. Come on, Toto. We'll look for tracks. Ah. There was enough moonlight to make it possible for the Lone Ranger and Toto to pick out and follow the familiar tracks of Dan's horse, Victor, whose shoes had an identifying mark. But presently, the ground became hard and made the masked man's task more difficult. Meanwhile, Thunder Martin couldn't sit still in Clarabelle's house. He returned to town and told a number of friends what had happened. Then he reported to the sheriff, who at once began to organize a posse. Later, the newly chosen judge called on Judge Knight. Jim Gordon and the doctor were there. Thunder argued for some time. Now, see here, Judge Knight, I I'm in a spot where I just can't rule on Ryan. There's no you can't hold court one more day. No, no, one more, one moment, Thunder. Let me tell you something. Well? By this time, everyone in town knows about the capture of Miss Hornblow and that young friend of yours, uh, Dan Reed. Because of that, the trial of Blinky Ryan is likely to become the most important trial in your career. It's a test for you. But doggone a Judge Snyder. This I... nation will grow strong and great as long as we have the right laws and impartial enforcement of those laws. But on the day that men in public office let personal prejudice interfere with the conduct of their duty, well, that day will mark the beginning of an end to the kind of country that was founded by the framers of our Constitution. Judge, but Dad, why did I can't let Clarabelle and Dan Reed die? Well, then go to court. Turn Ryan loose and save their lives. I... Yeah. Now, where are you going, Tender? I'm going home. I'm going to read the book of law that Judge Knight let me borrow. Then I'm going to do some thinking. The Lone Ranger and Toto had followed the trail for several hours while the moon sank lower in the sky. And then the moon went down and the night was dark. No use, Toto. I can hardly see my hand before my face. Oh, sir. Oh, sir. Oh, sir. Oh, sir. Oh. I hope we might get back to town before court opens. Oh. What's the matter, Silver? Hold on, boy. Where are you going? He never acted like this. Oh, he must have it. He acted that way one time before. He did? Ah. You remember some year ago when we near Green Valley, Silver act same way and then go to Valley. Yes, that's right, Toto. I remember. 
That was the time he ran away from us and returned to his first home. The time he found his son. Ah, and now Victor gone again. Maybe Silver know where and try to follow Victor. Otto, that might be it. Silver, I'm going to give you your head. Go on, Silver, find Victor. <coughs> right, big fellow. Take us to Victor. Without guidance, the great white stallion moved through the night, paused, uttered a shrill whinny, then cocked his ears and listened. When there was no response, he moved ahead. He seemed to forget the man in the saddle and traveled with unharnessed freedom as he had in his colthood days in the hills. As the first faint light of dawn broke over the eastern sky, the shrill whinnies of Dan's horse, Victor, roused Lund from his sleep. Hey, I hear hoofbeat. Another horse is heading this way. Well, get your gun out. If anyone stumbles on or a hideout, we'll have to do some shooting. You're right. Miss Hornblow, we don't want to hurt you or the boy. But if a rescue party comes this way, we'll shoot you both. Before we let you testify against them. Mm, precious little chance of a rescue party finding us in this hideout. Hey, Connie, look. There's the horse. Yeah. He's coming this way. I don't see anyone in the saddle. Well, there isn't. Somehow that horse has lost its rider. It was a joyous reunion when Silver and Victor met. They whinnied and nuzzled each other for some time, while Lund and Carney watched with amusement. The Lone Ranger and Tonto, who had dismounted and left Scout in the concealment of trees, had ample time to creep close to the hideout. Meanwhile, Dan and Clarabelle tried to keep their new hope from showing in their eyes. <laughs> Look at those horses. <laughs> sure seem to be old friends. I wonder what happened to the rider of the big one. I'll tell hey, you what. what. You're both covered. Stand look. He's mad. Come on, Tonto. Oh, you, you get him. That's it. Why you all get the Here it is. Oh. Right. You want some more? Get up and take it. Oh, my God. You say it. Now, let me be, will you? Oh, oh golly. Thank goodness you found us. When I saw oh. Silver without a rider, I... We heard I... Victor, Dan. We knew we were close to you. So we dismounted, left Scout concealed, and watched Silver come to this hideout. Then we followed. We've got to get to town. Thunder has a trial in a couple of hours. We'll start back as soon as we've roped these crooks. Everyone in town knew about the capture of Clarabelle and Dan Reed. A great crowd assembled in the courthouse to learn how Thunder Martin would handle the case of Blinky Ryan. The evidence against the prisoner was presented and the defense was heard. And then there was a short intermission while the new judge went to a small anteroom. Thunder's in a bad spot. I wonder what he's doing in the office by himself. Chances are he's figuring to find Ryan not guilty and then start running. If he finds Ryan not guilty, he'd better start running. When Thunder returned to the courtroom, a beam of sunlight slanting through a window illuminated the flag beside the bench. Thunder Martin's face was pale and tense, and he seemed to have acquired a new dignity. Order! Order in the court. The prisoner will rise and face the court. Blinky Ryan stepped in front of Thunder Martin with a confident swagger and a sneer on his face. Thunder glanced at the flag, then eyed Blinky coldly. Ryan, you've heard the evidence against you. I could find you guilty of disturbing the peace with a jail term up to six months. Six months? Why? On top of that? There's a law against packing a gun, which you've been proved guilty of violating. Of all the... Well, everyone packs a gun. Just the same, there's a law against it. And that law can be enforced. On top of that, you beat up three men before you were arrested. That's assault and battery. For that, a man can get two years. There's three counts against you. And if the judge rules that the sentences run consecutive... It makes six years for the assault and battery. I'm on trial for disturbing a peace. You can't bring up those other charges. Don't read the law to me, Ryan. Well, what do you figure on doing? So far, we got a total of eight years and six months against you. Eight years and six months? Why, you crazy, ugly looking... That's Ryan, his contempt of court. For that, I'm adding six months more. That makes it nine years even. You mean to say... I say it's the sentence of this court that you go to jail for nine years. You won't get away with this. Shut up and listen to what else I say. While you're in jail, 
I aim to get more evidence against you. And your pals as well. And I promise you, Ryan, you won't spend nine years in jail. I'm making it my business to see that we get proof of some of your real crimes. And by thunderation before I'm through, you'll hang. You'll be sorry for this. You'll be sorry. You just failed my pals here with this. I know what'll happen to Clarabelle Horn's oh, house. Hey, it's Clarabelle. Clarabelle. Thunder, me and Dale are safe and sound. And we heard you pass. Oh, oh, hold on a minute here. Sheriff, <clears throat> take that prisoner out and lock him up, the Court's adjourned. Come on, Ryan. Oh, no, wait, Sheriff. Wait a second. Clarabelle, Daniel, or... When did you get back to town? An hour ago. And the crooks who captured us are locked up in the jail. An hour ago? Well, Thunder Asian, why didn't you let me know? <laughs> well, you see, Thunder, the masked man found us. He knew you'd do the right thing, so he said we should wait and let the people around here see that they had a judge who couldn't be bribed or threatened. Uh, you hear that, Brian? You hear that? Your pals are locked in the jail. And we got them for abduction. And it won't take long to put all three of you on trial for charges where hanging's the penalty. Uh, judge, Judge, listen, Judge. Give me another chance. Sheriff, take him away. Come on, Ryan. You can join your pals. Now, listen, come on, now. Come on. Come on. Well, congratulations, Sunday. I'm proud of my selection for the new judge. Thanks, Judge Knight. Clarabelle, I want to hear all about your rescue, but... First, I want Thunder to tell me just one thing. Well, what's that, Judge Knight? You went into the private room for a few minutes before you rendered your decision. I'd like to know why. Uh, well, I'll tell you, Judge Knight. I went in there and I thought of Clarabelle and Dan Reed. Then I thought of what you told me about this flag and what my new job meant. And then I did something that... Well, I sort of tried to pray. And I asked the good Lord to help me make the right decision. And I asked him to help the Lone Ranger. feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy.